I want to thank the organizers for the invitation to speak here. The work that I'm going to share with you um, is being done in collaboration with Xander Brakefield Lab, Casey McGuire Lab, and my lab, all in the Department of Neurology at MGH. So what is um, TSC? Um, it's tuberous sclerosis complex. So this is an inherited multi-system disease caused by inactivating mutations in either TSC1 or TSC2 gene that encode the proteins known as hamartin or tuberin, respectively. So the incidence is one in 6,000, with approximately 50,000 cases affected in the US. And it's characterized by benign tumors in multiple organs, skin, you can see the skin lesion on your right, kidney, cyst, lung um, nodules, which is known as LAM for lymph angiole myomatosis, and then brain characterized by cortical tubers. So it's truly a multi-system disease, and heart is one of the earlier organs also to have rhabdomyomas. So um, brain is the most severely affected organ, frequently associated with autism spectrum disorder, epilepsy, and intellectual disability. So what do these proteins do? So TSC1 and 2 really function together as partners, as a complex, to control this major signaling pathway called mTORC1, that you can see downstream of the TSC complex. mTORC1 stands for Mechanistic Target of Rapamycin Complex. It's a master cellular sensor turning on or off depending on the upstream signals. So TSC1 and 2 for, with, as a complex serves as a break on the mTORC1 signaling in conditions of low energy, growth factors, hypoxia, et cetera. When either TSC1 or TSC2 is lost, Unrestricted mTORC1 signaling leads to increased protein translation, cell size, and proliferation. Cell size is one of the hallmarks of this disease with activation of mTORC1 pathway anywhere you look. For, for instance, you can see the mouse brain at the bottom. When TSC1 is eliminated, you can see the enlarged size of the brain. Same, la same way when you remove TSC2 from Drosophila eye, you see the increase in the omatidia size. So cell size is, in addition to proliferation, is a hallmark. So what's the current treatment? Rapamycin is a drug that very specifically inhibits mTORC1. Rapamycin and its analogs, commonly known as Rapalox, are given to patients, but however, it requires lifelong therapy with risk of side effects. And Rapalox are also shown to be not effective for early neurodevelopmental defects such as epilepsy and autism spectrum disorder. So therefore, Xander's lab, myself, and Casey, we decided to take the approach of gene therapy for this. But the gene is very big, 5.4 KB of cDNA, encoding about 200 kilodalton protein. It's beyond the insert capacity of the AAV vector. Therefore, we designed a novel strategy to have a condensed form of uh, TSC2. So if you look at the full-length tuberin, there is a TSC1 binding domain at the N terminus. At the C terminus, a gap domain that controls the mTORC1 signaling. So we decided to take the N terminal TSC1 binding domain and the C terminal domain with a linker uh, made an AAV uh, vector. So and then tested this vector in vitro first to make sure the C tuberin can in, indeed bind to TSC1 as well as inhibit mTORC1 signaling. So this kind of set the stage for additional testing in vitro and in vivo. So we next tested this AAV C tuberin in a stem cell model. What here I'm showing you was uh, generated in my lab from a TSC patient with a heterozygous mutation in exon 33. We got the skin fibroblast and made IPS uh, induced pluripotent stem cells, then use the CRISPR gene editing to either correct back to the wild type, the heterozygous mutation, or introduce the another mutation, a second mutation, to create a null mutation, and then generated neural progenitor cells, NPCs. So we call this as an isogenic system, where you have a wild type heterozygous and a null mutation from the same patient. So you can see here on the left with the green arrow, the null cells are clearly enlarged, the null NPCs, compared to the wild type on the left. 
And then when you introduce C-tuberin, the cell size is rescued. At the bottom is it's quantitated by a bar. So this clearly C-tuberin is functional in rescuing the cell size defect in the patient-derived cells. Similarly, you, we see increased proliferation when you keep these cells up to a week. Uh, I'm showing here day three and day four, the null cells proliferate faster than the wild-type cells, and then when you reintroduce C-tuberin in an AAV vector, again, you can see rescue of the cell proliferation defects. So this kind of gave us the confidence uh, the condensed form of tuberin is functional, can rescue some of the key phenotypes in the patient-derived model, so we went on to check a mouse model. Mouse model was generated in Xander Brakefield's lab, so where a TSC2 floxed animal is given a Cree at P0, and then the animals die around 58 days. The so median survival for these animals is 58 days. When then when you give AAV Cree, um, you can see the survival is extended to 462 days. So this is a single IV injection of AAVC tuberin. And then when you give AAVC tuberin wild type animals, uh, they are perfectly fine, suggesting there is no toxicity. We further looked into the brain sections of these animals for readout of mTORC1 signaling, which is typically phosphorylation of S6, which is a key molecule downstream of mTORC1 signaling. You can see again, compared to the wild type in the top panel, the middle panel here increased in phospho S6 staining, increase in neuron size, and then when you give back C-tuberin, uh, again, the cell size is reduced, phospho S6 staining is reduced, and quantitated again on the right side. So, and also, um, to look at a little bit more in the brain, uh, on the left side is a schematic of the mouse brain with ependymal and subependymal cells lining the ventricle. In a normal brain, you have a single layer of ependymal cells. In the TSC2 null brain, you have multiple layers indicating increase in proliferation. Also, these mice get uh, ependymal nodules, which is one of the patient's symptoms as well. So when you again give C-tuberin, all these phenotypes are reversed, the growth phenotype as well as the proliferation phenotype is reversed, suggesting this is functional in in vivo mouse models. We next went on to check whether how does it compare with the rapalogs uh, when you give rapalog uh, versus the single dose of AAVC tuberin. So here again, uh, we started uh, with P0 Cree, median survival for these animals is 50 days. And then when you start giving Rapalog at P21 and remove Rapalog at P56, the animals die, the median survival is 74 days. And then different doses of AAVC tuberin was given. At a low dose of AAVC tuberin, median survival is 68 days, compared to either a middle dose or high dose, the survival extends up to 150 days. So we didn't wait any further. We just recently completed this study. This is clearly depicting uh, a single dose of AAVC uh, C tuberin could be even complementing if you patients are on Rapalog, but it extends the survival beyond Rapalog. So in summary, what I have shared with you is loss of TSC2 gene in cells that encodes tuberin, pro tu removing protein, um, uh, tuberin leads to tuberous sclerosis complex with increase in mTORC1 signaling, enlarged cell size and proliferation. And we have created a novel condensed form of uh, tuberin which is fully functional and enables effective AAV delivery. An AVC tuberin reverses impact of loss of TSC2. Single injection, I have um, shown you, decreases mTORC1 signaling and increased survival. And response is more durable compared to Rapalog treatment alone, which is the current standard of care for these patients. So what are the next steps? Um, so we need to finish the ongoing in vivo mouse studies to test the effect of AAV C tuberin on behavioral phenotypes and brain abnormalities and seizures and testing AVC tuberin in non-human primates. These data should set, set the stage for translating AAV-driven gene replacement therapy of a TSC patients. So with that, I'll finish. And this, to finish this work, it's approximately going to take one to two million dollars from outside um, resources. And then uh, all the people that uh, we have been working on for the last few years. Thank you. <laughs>